located between 12 degrees and 18 degrees north latitude and 36 degrees and 44 degrees east longitude. Eritrea occupies about 125,000 square kilometers of land area. The country shares its borders with the Sudan in the north and west, Ethiopia and Djibouti in the south, and the Red Sea in the east. For thousands of years, this land, now a self-governing state, has been the crossroads of ancient trading routes from Asia, Arabia and Africa, and home to various ethnic groups practicing different lifestyles, religions and traditions. All bright, cheerful, assertive and hospitable, a mixture of faiths and cultures, the people of Eritrea find harmony and unity in diversity. Eritrea has been home to various cultural groups for thousands of years. In modern-day Eritrea, there are nine distinct ethnic groups, namely the traditionally farmers, the Bilen, with their social structures organized by kinship groups, the agriculturalist Tigrinya, working the populated highlands, the welcoming Tigre, whose oral literature consists of folktales, legendary war cries and riddles, the semi-nomadic pastoralist Adarab, specializing in raising camels and cattle, the proud Saho of their unique techniques in bee farming, the renowned dancers of the Kunama, who have developed more than 25 different dancing forms, the mixed cultures of the Nara and the Afar, who are strictly tradesmen, and adopted to the very harsh and inhospitable desert terrain. And the nomadic Roshida. These nine ethnic groups, nomads and pastoralists, fishers and farmers, live in complete harmony and unity in Africa's newest nation, building a brighter future for a stronger and modern Eritrea. Eritrea served as a route for the passage of religions, immigrations and civilizations in the very old times. Churches and mosques, the two symbols of the two religions, still stand as testimony to their early arrival in the country, like this monastery of the Debrevizen built by Abu Nafilipos in 1361. Some of the houses of worship have even become the icon of the capital Asmara, like the cathedral in the Haranet Avenue, built by the Capuchin Association in 1921 to 1923, that incorporates one of the finest relief and brickwork worthy of such a landmark. It has a large tower, 25 meters high, with eight bells weighing 100 kilograms at the top. Much of the church's interior is made by hand. Also built during the Italian colonial era in 1900 is the Khalifa al rashidin Mosque, the largest in Asmara. It features a large square right in front of it, where the faithful gather on Fridays and holidays for prayers. Possibly one of the most fascinating country sites in Eritrea is the permanently green forest and plantations of the Semanawi Bahari, full of large picturesque trees and home to a vast variety of bird life. Visitors cannot fail to experience the soothing sound of birds that bring peace and delight.
Eritrea used to be a major haven for wildlife like the hyenas, elephants and the graceful gazelles in the Gajbarka and the swift ostriches in the Dinkalia region, offering extensive cover and plenty of water. Baboons and burbet monkeys are much in evidence still in this region of the Samanawi Bahri. Life under sea off the Masawa East Coast opens up a veritable treasure chest of colorful fish and exotic corals that have made the undisturbed marine paradise of the Red Sea a scuba diver's delight and an aquatic wonderland. Of the 1,000 plus species or subspecies of fish known to inhibit the Red Sea, some 15% are not found anywhere else but here. The main source of livelihood for the villagers around here is fishing with the help of their wooden crafts or the shambooks. The coast of Masawa is also renowned for shipwrecks, with some of them reclining only 3 meters below the surface, while others are as far deep as 4 kilometers. These wrecks include World War II Italian warships, frigates and even tanks with a number of them still in very good condition.
northeast of the capital Asmara, about 115 kilometers, is the second largest city in Eritrea, Masawa. The city has a checkered history dating back thousands of years. The ancient Greeks and Egyptians regarded it as an important trading point, and in the centuries that followed, it became a regional prize worth fighting over. Travelers from Europe who visited Masawa in the 19th century speak of the cosmopolitan nature of the port which drew merchants from India, the Middle East and the markets of the West. The architecture of Eritrea presents a dramatic range of styles and many fine examples exist demonstrating the new Florentine and neoclassical art deco movements in Italian architecture during the 1920s and 30s. The gates of the villas, especially Nasmara, made of iron work, are remarkable and are mainly in the classical style. This style is clearly identified by the presence of verandas, the accommodations, the presence of high ceilings with shutters and screens incorporated into the portico. Built by the Italians in the early 1920s on the main Harinat Avenue is the delightfully formal, light and delicate-faced Cinema Asmara. This is the formal Imperial Palace with its distinctive extravagant architectural touch. This state palace of Haile Selassie is now the National Museum of Eritrea. The country with its colonization background has also inherited some of the European cuisine. But it is this, the traditional gastronomy, that attracts tourists by the thousands. Located to the north of the main street running from the city centre to Udaga Arbi is the noisiest place in Asmara, the Medebar. This place houses hundreds of privately owned stalls where diligent workers recycle every imaginable material into a mind-boggling number of items. Pipes into rocking cradles, tin cans into stoves and more. Most of the work here is done by hand without the benefit of modern machinery. To the northwest of the capital city of Asmara, covering a surface area of 21,500 kilometers, is the Ansiba zone. This zone sits upon a 500 to 2,500 meters range of altitude above sea level and boasts a highlands temperature with a lowlands warm climate. At a slightly elevated area in the zone is the elaborate agricultural estate, famous for its oranges, grapes and tomatoes. Some Italian entrepreneurs once developed this estate, which is spread over an area of 1,200 hectares, of which only 300 are cultivated. Exactly 91 kilometers northwest from Asmara is the beautiful city of Karen. This city is a trading center with a cross-culture of many languages, family groups and religions. It has a styled circle of flowers, commonly referred to as the Jira Fury, where all the roads of the town meet. A 20 minutes walk past the Italian cemetery to the right of the market area will bring you to the most prominent shrine of St. Mary of the Arit, popularly known as Mariam da Arit. The shrine is inside a large Ababa proto which was inaugurated by the 5th Vicar Apostolico Trevere in 18 July 1881. Gradually, Mariam da Arit has become a popular open-air shrine, a sign of unity and religious devotion. Regardless of congregational diversity, Today the shrine encompasses an area of over 10 hectares where oranges and guavas are grown in orchards. 
across the center of the market that runs a short street that makes Karan unique for its silver jewelry such as the hijal which is traditionally worn on the ankle, tikek and the wancha that are worn as armbands, the somat largely worn as necklaces and the completely rounded tiket to name but a few. This is the dry arid region of the western lowlands deep into the Kunama territory, the town of Baruntu with its one main street. There are many nomadic tribes in this area contained within its dusty streets rippled with everyday life. Animals here are treated well and have a similar status to cars in the Western world. And here is the equivalent of the Rolls Royce. It is grinding millet seed for oil, a process which hasn't changed in centuries. But during the 30 years struggle for independence, the camel played an essential role moving supplies around the country. It's now been adopted as Eritrea's national emblem. Located 11 kilometers south of Adriyah and positioned on a flat plain area are the archaeological sites of Ohaito that date back from approximately 400 to 500 BC. Although most of the sites have never been excavated, the ruins of the ancient city of Ohaito are very impressive. In the ancient city, we find structures standing in columns of monumental arrangement, possibly temples. 136 kilometers south of Asmara is San Afe, and just 2 kilometers to the south of the town is the partially excavated ancient city of Metera. One of the extra conspicuous features of the city until very recently was a 5 meters obelisk with an inscription that has been dated to the 3rd century. On the top is an engraved symbol of a South Arabian divinity, a discover and a crescent. Sadly, this ancient relic was deliberately destroyed by the Ethiopian army and dynamited in its recent invasions against the Eritrea. It now lies on the ground besides the road where it once stood. The archaeological site covers about 10 hectares, conserved to almost 2 meters in height. The walls of many buildings can still be seen today. Apparently, the oldest Christian monastery in Eritrea, the Debra Libanos, is supposed to have been founded in the late 5th or early 6th century by the Syrian missionary Abba Meta or Metaos, known as Libanos, who evangelized in Bakla and Saraya as well as Shimazana. Debra Libanos is about 150 kilometers from the capital Asmara. Originally located in the village of Ham, the monastery was later moved to its present accessible location perched on the edge of a cliff below the Ham Plateau. Its church contains the Golden Gospel, a metal-covered Bible containing copies of land charters that date back to the early 13th century, and a large number of mummified bodies were discovered right here, which are still in the process of being dated. Experts estimate the mummies to be over 500 years old. The mummified bodies were wrapped in cloth and tightly wrapped with animal skins, the same kind of yellow cloth and animal skin that are worn by monks today. This site is considered to be one of the most important in Eritrea and is already attracting tourists by the hundreds. One of the greatest tourist attractions in Eritrea is the Italian-built railway system. 
history tells us that the railway between Asmara and Masawa and from Asmara to Karan and Agordat was initially built as a link between the port city and the fort at Sa'ati, just a few kilometers away on Eritrea's coastal plains in 1887. But 14 years later, in 1901, it was decided to undertake a much more daunting and ambitious task to take the line up the precipitous escarpment to Asmara. And in 1911, one year after reaching the Fasit, the construction crews hammered home the last spike in Asmara. As much as anything, it was a matter of colonial pride. Like most railways by the British and other colonies in Africa, the plan in Eritrea involved the massive civil engineering challenge the line snaking back and forth in a series of tight bends. This unique transport facility was operating until 1975. Sadly, the once proud stations, the tracks and beautiful works of engineering were reduced to rubble by the following colonialists who used them as trenches. And eventually, when independence dawned, the most visible signs of the old Asmara Masawa railway line were the skeletons of the once proud stations that marked its progress and some old and unusable rolling stock. But just as it represented the development of Eritrea in the colonial eras, the railway had a special meaning in the rebuilding of today's independent nation. The Eritrean government decided the idea was too good to abandon and instead agreed on a remarkable policy of do-it-yourself repair. Veterans who had worked on the line during the Italian period were called upon to utilize their skills again, repairing the rolling stock. Members of Eritrea's nation-building national service and students on summer work programs were assigned to collect the sleepers and repair the task. Once fully completed, it is greatly anticipated that this particular railroad will give a new sense of adventure to railway enthusiasts by providing spectacular scenery of the escarpment and valleys. There is a common purpose and national spirit in Eritrea, which is quite unique in Africa. It's emerging now into prosperity. There is no corruption, almost no crime and vast potential. The people are energetic, resourceful and deeply committed to building a new nation in the fastest possible time. The government of Eritrea is gradually introducing the country's perennial tourist attractions to all interested. Already tourists by the thousands are visiting all the sites Eritrea has to offer with all its multiplicity, beauty, excitement and endless adventures.